I mean, my, my journey to diagnosis is, is a fairly short one. Um, I was fortunate enough to have been identified at birth via newborn screening as, as a patient with HCU. Um, so uh, yeah, I was uh, born in the Boston area. I personally can't remember which hospital exactly, but you know, I uh, was put through the newborn screening process in Massachusetts, which, which at that point in time um, in the early 90s was testing for homocystinuria. And then uh, after a couple weeks, um, that diagnosis came back, and my family was connected with Dr. Mary Ampola at uh, the Floating Hospital in Boston. And she was the one that educated us on um, the disorder, what we had to do to manage it. And uh, she was my doctor and, and specialist for, for homocystinuria up until uh, my teenage years. So, um, so yeah, I, I know there are other members of the community that had a, a longer journey to their diagnosis, but mine was uh, kind of the... the you know, standard path uh, associated with um, newborn screening. So um, I've had a number of specialists for homocystinuria. Um, really, all of them have played a part in my management of the, the disorder in the diet. Um, but really, uh, and, and no offense to the others I've dealt with, uh, uh, they've all been great. Um, the best uh, of them all was Dr. Mary Ampola uh, at Tufts Medical Center. Um, I mean, she just uh, cared so much about her patients. Um, I mean, really, I see Dr. Impol, even to this day, after her being retired and, and sort of out of my, uh, in, out of involvement in my medical, um, how, in, well, with her being retired and no longer involved in, in my health, um, I still see her as sort of like a grandmother or mother figure. Um, uh, she, and I, I'm sure my parents would say the same. Uh, I mean, she you know, uh, educated us, especially my parents, on what we were dealing with, assured us that it would be possible to live a fairly normal life as long as certain things were done. And um, she uh, was, uh, you know, good at being strict about how to manage the diet and, and keeping it, you know, we, uh, when I was with Dr. Impola, we went in every month for bloods. We, uh, you know, followed the diet as she said. We changed the formula as she said. I mean, she uh, kept a close eye on myself and every other patient and really just, I mean, she cared. Uh, uh, there's a great article out there that was written about her in the Boston Globe when she retired, and I think it, it tells the story. She, she, she just really, truly, there's, there's not many uh, medical professionals like her. She, she really, like, just, just truly cares about the people she, she um, is overseeing as a doctor. Sure. So, I mean, my day-to-day -day experience with, with HCU, I mean, I could talk about it, uh, maybe I'll break down into two pieces. So, I mean, as a, as a child, um, it, there were certainly tough periods. Um, it's very hard, especially when I was growing up, it was very hard to follow the diet. I mean, it wasn't as common as it is now for someone to be on a special diet, to have um, different food and, and, and different medication to take um, from pretty much everyone else that I went to school with or hung out with. So that was difficult. And I, I you know, I'll admit that um, when I was young, I, I, had, um, so I had problems with people making fun of me uh, because of what I ate, um, you know, issues, some issues with social situations. Um, so, so that w it was challenging, um, but, you know, it was important. I knew it was important to remain on diet as much as possible and to take my formula, even if those were hard things to do. So I, I think throughout my childhood and most of my teenage years, I was pretty good about sticking on um, on with you know the low protein diet and and taking my formula. Um, I think the second part to the answer is talking a bit about growing up in later teenage years, going to college, and then and as an adult. Um, I mean, admittedly, I, I I don't know if I can sort of identify myself as a role model for, for people with homocystinuria. I, I, um, I'm I not the best at sticking with my diet. I'm not one of the people who raises their hand as someone who counts out every gram of protein that they eat in the day. I mean, I've developed sort of a, a sixth sense for what, you know, protein might be in food, and that's kind of how I, I manage my, my diet. Um, but I, you know, I've had high levels, and um, you know, I think I've always been, even to this day, trying to do a better job with the betaine, which is which is key, and um, with uh, consistency with the formula. So, um, you know, I have improvements that I can make, um, but overall, um, I, I haven't really let uh, 
HCU tr take away from my day to day as much as I can. It's certainly a consideration. Um, if I go on a, a trip, I need to think about what I do about the formula, or if um, you know, if I'm going out, I need to uh, make sure that I I know about the restaurant and uh, you know, maybe what kind of food might be there. But um, but generally, it's gotten one. It's gotten easier a little bit because of the different diets that are that are popular now, either or prevalent now because people have to have them or, or want to have them. And two, um, I mean, I, I just, the way I deal with HCUs, I don't, um, it's a consideration, but I don't let it sort of be a, a hurdle. Um, it's kind of tough because I like to tell people that I think it's provided some adversity, which is good. I, th I think um, I'd like to see it as like adversity helps you grow, which is great. Um, but I also, it's kind of tough. I try to walk a fine line between that and saying that it's also not something that you need to sit there and say that your child is, is going to be held back. Like, I, I think that, um, it's like a, ch it's a challenge, but it's not something that should, you should use as a, uh, reason to prevent you from doing something. Yeah, I, I think the biggest challenge for me has been, uh, really sticking to the level of protein and the betaine. And I know those are two different things, but those are the two areas I've been working on the most. Um, I think of the two, if I have to pick one, I'd say the betaine has been my biggest challenge. Um, I, for a long time, I was on, I believe, about six grams of betaine a day, if I remember correctly. And um, a couple years ago, when I moved to the ch uh, children's hospital in that clinic, um, we moved to 12 grams a day. So I had to double my amount. Um, you know, I'm also working and I can really only take that, at least the way that I, I do it, at, you know, in the morning and at night. So depending on my schedule, it can be kind of hard to get both doses in. So that's been something I've tried to work on as much as possible. Um, Dr. Levy is a big believer in betaine and uh, at my other uh, specialist at Children's, Dr. Berry is also a big believer. I mean, they think that, you know, as long as uh, someone with homocystinuria can take the betaine and, and man, you know, manage it fairly well, there's a good chance that they won't see any negative side effects. So, so yeah, I mean, the betaine is tough. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with it, but it's, it's, it's important. It's um, the best sort of uh, dr prescription drug treatment that we have outside of maybe the formula for the for the disorder, so certainly something people should try to stick with. Um, I mean, the, the biggest concern with homocystinuria is all the possible negative side effects and the fact that, you know, it's hard to, to, to know on a daily basis how much risk you might be taking in regards to those side effects. So, you know, I, at, at most I get bloods once a month and that doesn't happen much anymore, unfortunately. So I really only have that, you know, cadence or, or sort of amount of check-in um, on what my levels are. But those could vary very much day to day. And when those get high, you know, there's a higher risk of, of strokes and, and heart attacks and other, you know, things that you obviously don't want to happen. So I think that's the, my biggest concern um, is, is that, yeah, I don't have a good idea um, you know, if I eat certain things or, um, you know, don't take my formula, whatever it may be, of how much risk that really represents. Um, and that's, that's, so, you know, I think some people might talk a bit about the diet and um, maybe concerns socially or just concerns about nutrition or whatever it may be. But um, for me, I, I think that, you know, the diet is what is what it is. Um, and, you know, even if, with the potential treatments that are being looked at at, at the moment. Even if there was a, a quote unquote cure for, for homocystinuria, personally, I probably wouldn't change my diet too much, but I would be you know alleviated of the concerns that something bad would happen if I do go over on my protein. Um, for, for me, my single greatest hope is, I, I don't know, I've set a lot of goals that I wanna achieve and the, the the personal goals, professional goals, things like that. And I mean, my hope is that I can reach those goals. Um, kind of within the context of homocystinuria, I mean, I really want to, my, you know, my goal even before it was um, even a, po a possibility that there could be a, a treatment um, or, you know, sort of semi-cure, you know, before those were even on the, on the table, um, I've been hoping to get involved in making uh, or ch checking on the effectiveness of those things if they ever did 
develop. So, so that's really, uh, you know, more closer to the, to the HD side of things. That's sort of my hope is to be involved in those processes so I can help ensure that uh, the treatments are developed and hopefully successful because, again, I've, I have been fortunate not to have had a lot of negative effects from HCU, and I sort of see that as allowing me to play a role in helping develop something that could help people who, who have a harder time with the disorder and can't maybe participate in the trials or the early stages of the drugs or treatments because, because their health, uh, you know, they have other health concerns that could interfere. The, I think the greatest hope for the HCU community is, is uh, you know, it's great to have the community and, and resources and, and advocacy that we're getting now with um, HCU Network America and with um, all of the sort of bits and pieces that are, are part of that because we've had other organizations in the past and um, they've certainly been helpful. Uh, in fact, I know that some of the work that was done by the New England Connection helped with some of the legislation that got newborn screening put in place in other states beyond the ones that were testing back, I think, probably 10 or so years ago. Um, but, you know, I, again, I, maybe this goes back to my thoughts about the treatments. You know, if you had talked to me t 10 years ago, um, I, I probably would have told you that there's really no way in my lifetime that I could expect to see uh, a treatment on the level of what we're seeing with the enzyme replacement therapies and, and things like that. And I know they're not proven, but but even back then, I, you know, the, the the concept of those being po you know possible or down coming down the line within a couple decades, I probably would have been skeptical. So I think the attention this is getting and the community that's forming around it. Um, is creating the possibilities uh, and sort of creating the attention that is resulting in those treatments. And I think the community itself is great because, um, you know, people can share knowledge. And, you know, while there's been major strides in regards to HCU, it, it's still apparent that new parents uh, have a lot to deal with and they don't know, don't have a lot of resources. So it's good that we're developing sort of a system to, to give them access to information that they can use. You know, I really like to stress the idea of this being, or really any disorder probably being, something to look at as a challenge in a positive light. It's very hard, and I and again, I can I fully recognize that there are people out there with HCU and other disorders that deal with a lot more than what I've dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also uh, there. You know, there are people that have dealt with a lot more than than myself that have also realized that it's something to take on as a challenge and do your best to overcome it, and almost in some cases turn it into a strength. So I, I think that's the thing. I mean, um, I you know, I, with with my take with Homo Cisnari is uh, I I try not to let it sort of define my life, but it's there. And um, as a result, I feel that I've grown up sort of facing something and that has helped me realize that, you know, sometimes things are going to be tough, but you have to figure out how to deal with that. And, um, you know, if you want to keep moving forward, like, you don't have much of a choice. Um, sometimes you can't just get something out of the way. It's just going to be there and you got to figure out what to do about it. So I think that's the thing is just... Um, you know, this is, I guess, primarily uh, something that patients of different disorders would deal with. But really, um, even, I guess, as a, a parent, just thinking about the fact that this isn't, you know, the end of the world for your child. This isn't, doesn't mean that they're stuck in a certain way of life. Um, maybe they've had complications, but, um, you know, do they'll do what they can, hopefully, and you'll, you should do what you can to, to help them deal with that and, and sort of see it as something to be better at or get beyond or, or sort of succeed against.